Hey, Wimbrook World Entertainment and the G.I. Joe Transformers movie now has a bit of an update. We know Paramount seems to be wanting to move forward with it, but we now have who they're looking to star in it. No, it's not the guy from Transformers Rise of the Beasts who gets handed the card at the end of that movie to set up this crossover. It's in fact Chris Hemsworth. That's right, Thor himself. And it's interesting that they're eyeing him for the, to be a starring role in this, seeing as he's already going to be in a starring role in a Transformers movie coming out this year, with Transformers 1, the animated movie, where he's going to be voicing Optimus Prime. Is he being looked at to be the voice of Optimus in this movie? Apparently not. It is looking like they want him to be live action and they're possibly pointing towards him playing Duke for G.I. Joe. So let's have a look at this. So there is a bit of an article. We're not going to go over it, the whole thing. The majority of it was talking about the end of Rise of the Beast to set this up. So it says uh, Stephen Campbell, or Capel Jr., was briefly eyed to direct but is no longer attached. And as far as we are aware, Paramount Pictures doesn't have a screenplay. So Stephen Capel Jr. is the guy who directed the last movie, The Rise of the Beast, which failed. He's also the director who never told you actually what the hell that movie was going to be because all he ever talked about was, oh, this is going to be the story for brown and black people to finally see themselves in this universe. And it was like, cool, what the hell's the movie about? And that's all he kept talking about was race. I was like, Jesus Christ, dude. What's the movie about? No one cares about the human characters. All we want to see is the robots kick the shit out of each other. But apparently he's out. Uh, no big loss there. And they don't have a screenplay. Because as far as I'm aware, they don't have writers yet for this thing. But it says, despite that, Deadline has just broken the news that Thor, Love and Thunder, and Furiosa star Chris Hemsworth is in talks to take on the lead role in the movie. He's already lending his voice to Optimus Prime in the animated Transformers 1, though it sounds like this will be a live action role. Could he be Duke? We'll have to wait and see. We've also learned that Michael Bay is producing. Well, whoop de doo <laughs> What Transformers movie is his name not attached to? Um, it's... It's interesting that they're looking for him to be the starring role. Um, what was the guy's name? Anthony Ramos. He was the guy who uh, was in the Rise of the Beast who pretty much was setting up this crossover. Whether he's in it or not, don't know. It doesn't seem to say anything about whether or not they're looking for him to continue the role. But they obviously want a bigger name and they're looking at Chris Hemsworth. So... We know what they've previously said about the crossovers and stuff and what it means for them. That it, they, you know, they want to combine the two worlds and all this crap. I'm pretty sure they did reveal a logo at, wasn't it one of the cons in Mexico or Brazil? One of those places uh, that they did show a logo, which was the crossover of the Transformers logo and the G.I. Joe logo. Chris Hemsworth being in it, fine. You know, why not? And um, the question is, do people really care enough about it? Because Rise of the Beast failed at the box office. Um, the, you know, these movies are up and down. Bumblebee was probably the most well-received and most successful of them all. None of the G.I. Joe movies Paramount has put out have worked. None of them. That's including the two actual G.I. Joe movies... What was it, G.I. Joe, Cobra, something, and, or was it Rise of Cobra, and Retaliation, wasn't that the second one, with The Rock and uh, Bruce Willis, which was slightly better than the first one, but still a garbage movie, and then of course, Snake Eyes, which was basically a movie that didn't actually feature Snake Eyes, because Snake Eyes doesn't walk around talking. And he most certainly doesn't walk around in suits and stuff. He should have had the full suit on. But of course, you get that actor diva style. You're not covering my face. Well then, don't take the role. 
Do not accept the role of a character whose face is constantly covered and then complain that the face is covered. Looking at you, Pedro Pascal, and the dude who plays Master Chief. <laughs> like, you're taking on these roles and you're like being little bitches and oh, you must see my face. Why? At least Carl Urban refused to take the helmet off for dread. They were like, oh, we want to see your face. He was like, no, I'm keeping the helmet on. That's the character of Judge Dredd. He keeps the helmet on. So he did. He didn't care about the fact that, oh, you can't see my face. And that's the thing about these type of characters. You're going for the character, not the person playing it. Realistically, with Snake Eyes, they should have just brought back Ray Park. Put him back in the suit and not say a word. It would be interesting to have a movie where your main character doesn't speak, but everyone else around them could speak. It's easily done. Just look at Silent Night uh, with um, Joel Kinnaman. Uh, decent movie. And that movie, no one speaks. There's no dialogue in that movie. So they, they really have an uphill battle here because you want to continue, obviously, the Transformers. But how do you keep it fresh and relevant and stuff? Because, as I said, it's been up and down with the reaction to it. Bumblebee was the most well-liked, well-received. And then, of course... Rise of the Beasts was the follow-up and that was actually the sequel to Bumblebee which made no sense especially when Bumblebee was barely in the movie and then of course it ends with hey we're going to have a crossover with G.I. Joe so you're like you, you've been up and down with your success with your Transformers movie and you've never succeeded with G.I. Joe and now you want to smash the two of them together and if you think Chris Hemsworth is going to be star power to pull in an audience, think again, because outside of Marvel, he does not star in successful movies. At all. Look, just look at Furiosa. It's crashing and burning at the box office. Ghostbusters 2016, of course, crashed and burned at the box office. The only movies that were really liked, but you'd not seen the numbers or any draw for it, was Extraction and Extraction 2. But they're Netflix movies. So he's not putting asses in seats. And it'll be really telling to see what happens when this Transformers 1 comes out. Which just looks horrendous by the way. I did a trailer reaction to that before. And god it looks terrible. And it's all like surfer dude Transformers basically. It looks horrible. The animation's horrible. The voices are horrible. Yeah just no. But... They're owing him to lead the Transformers and G.I. Joe crossover movie. Good luck with that one. And let's see who ends up writing it, who ends up directing it, and where exactly they take it. So, with that, I shall leave it there for this one. So cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.